Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I am your Gaming Monk for the evening. Welcome to another installment of Characters with Character, the series where we take characters from various storytelling mediums and adapt them into tabletop games. Today, I look at the <clears throat> vertically challenged alchemist from Risen Bull, Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist. Now, I say with no hyperbole that both the original adaptation and its latter attempt in Brotherhood tick several boxes in anime that I like in the context of being fantastical settings, heavy on thematic character pieces. A further detail on this matter is better served by Alexander's character study videos he's done on the series. I'll link the, some of his videos in the description. And while it's not an ideal choice, I'll be using Anima Beyond Fantasy for this one, in part because I want to demonstrate the potential of this little Spanish game that I hope gets translated again in the future. Furthermore, while in previous episodes of the series we've bent the rules a little, as I house rule everything, We'll be dropping the a little part of that, as this will be much more in-depth with our bending of the rules. Before we get to that, we need to establish Edward's pillars. While it might be tempting to focus on his outburst when being called short and his use of automail prosthetics, the former is not enough of a compulsion to justify mechanical presence, while the latter has the issue that prosthetics and anima don't confer enough benefits on their own to justify it. While prosthetics can be implemented, and there are rules to graft them in Prometheum Exet, Ed's auto mail doesn't have any special properties beyond being made of metal, and that metal isn't of a rare alloy or anything similar. While it would be possible to house rule it, since Anima doesn't place an emphasis on target body areas as, say, Riddle of Steel does, it'd be too much effort for too little return here. Instead, I want to focus on two more important pillars in my opinion. These being, of course, alchemy, and his adaptive nature, along with the concept of training the mind and the body that he inherited from his teacher, Izumi. Anima does have an alchemy system, but something I want to make clear is that alchemy in the sense of most fantasy games is not the same as the one presented in the series. If anything, it is more in common with runic magic, which we'll get into later. Thus, this harmony of training body and mind within the physical and philosophical context of alchemy is what we'll focus on. We'll start with the easier parts of this. We'll be going with 5th level instead of 1st in other games, and this will play a role into later parts since his starting presence is 60. Now, obviously we're going with humans, so that can be skipped too. This leaves us to tackle characteristic generation as our first step. We'll be using method 4 for this where we roll 2d10, keep the higher of the two, and repeat this process 8 times. This makes our starting attributes to be strength 8, agility 8, dexterity 10, constitution 8, intelligence 10, Perception 8, Power 10, and Willpower 10. Since we're level 5, we gain 2 points to spend on attributes, resulting in Constitution being moved from its original 6 to 8. This makes our actions per turn to be 3, his movement to be 28 meters per turn, his initiative to be 70, his starting life points to be 60, and his resistances to be the following. Physical, Disease, and Poison 70, Magic, and Psychic 75. Next is Class. It should be noted that classes in anima aren't classes in the traditional sense. They're more akin to archetypes that make learning certain abilities and skills more or less expensive depending on the class chosen. We'll be going with Warlock in this case, which is a hybrid of the Fighter and Wizard classes. This choice of class provides a set of inherent bonuses to life points, initiative, attack, block, dodge, zeon points, and magic appraisal skill. This might sound odd since the show goes out of the way to state that alchemy isn't magic. Now I disagree in the context of a game sense, because of the fact that the use of symbol-based transmutation circles and an inherent power in certain symbols, again, has more in common with runic magic than it does with anything else. There's a science to understanding how you're breaking the rules, but you're still breaking the rules nonetheless. Next is creation points, the closest thing that anima gets to min-maxing. We have three points to spend on advantages and may gain points from up to three disadvantages. We'll start with disadvantages first. We gain two points from shamanism to account for the fact that alchemy cannot create from nothing. It needs physical material in order to utilize its effects. One additional point comes from the gesture requirement, accounting for the clapping gesture Ed does, as well as touching whatever gets the alchemical treatment. We'll gain one more for the dirty little secret disadvantage to account for his attempt at human transmutation. This means that we have a total of 7 points for advantages. Now we'll put 2 of these in acquiring the gift, allowing us to use spells. We'll put 2 more in natural knowledge of a path twice, 
granting us a level of 40 in two magic paths, Earth and Creation. The remaining points will go into the three-point version of Superior Magic Recovery, multiplying our daily Xeon Recovery by four. Before we get to the final steps, we need to address the natural bonuses to secondary abilities. This grants a plus 10 to five abilities per level, and a 15 to a physical and mental ability. Keep this in mind when we tackle secondary abilities, a la skills. The final and most detailed part is development points. We have 1,200 points to spend, and no more than 600 of these can be spent in one of the three major categories, combat, magic, and psychic. We'll start with secondary abilities, since it'll be the least crunchy. Now each category has a 2 to 1 rate of advancement in this. We'll be spending 60 points, and thus apply a bonus of 30, to alchemy, runes, and magic appraisal. As for our natural bonuses, we'll go with the follow. Runes 45, alchemy 30, sleight of hand 20, forging 45, streetwise 30, magic appraisal 60, tactics 25, appraisal 20, occult 30, memorize 30, medicine 20, herbal lore 10, science 30, search 30, notice 10, jump 15, climb 20, athletics 30, and acrobatics 35. Now next is combat, and subsequently, key dominion. We'll start with putting 100 points each in attack and dodge, granting each a bonus of 50, totaling his attack and dodge to be 90 and 85 respectively. The rest of the combat budget is going into modules and martial arts. For modules, we'll go with the soldier package for 50 DP, and along with the following style modules, 40 DP on additional attack, 50 DP on chain attack. The former allows for an additional attack without penalty, and the latter treats the additional attack penalty for one degree lower, i.e. medium-sized weapons have the small-sized weapon penalties. This will be important when it comes to crafting alchemical weapons. In the spirit of training mind and body, we'll be spending DP on three martial arts, 10 for Shotokan for being the first, and 20 each on Taekwondo and Savate. The combination of these allow them to have an unarmed damage of 20 plus our strength bonus, and an additional attack at a minus 30 penalty and minus 10 damage, as well as a plus 10 modifier on counterattacks, and only a minus 10 penalty on our second use of dodge rolls. Each of these add to our total martial knowledge, which leads to the next step. Our starting martial knowledge is 100 for being level 5. And we gain 30 from the martial arts that we picked, as well as an additional 30 from spending 30 DP, totaling 160 martial knowledge. This can be spent to learn key abilities, which we'll put into use of key, key control, detection of key, presence extrusion, aura extension, increased damage, increased speed, and destruction by key. The latter of which is in case anyone wants to do the whole step two trick that Scar is notorious for. In addition, this allows him to detect nearby energies, boost damage on physical attacks, boost his own initiative, all of which may use key points, which we have a total of nine. The last part is magic, which is based on a few pillars. The first is Xeon, Anima's equivalent to magic point. Our base value is 135 due to having a power of 10. We gain 300 more from spending the same amount of DP, along with an additional 100 from being level 5. Second is Accumulation, which determines how quickly you can generate Xeon for spellcasting. Think of it akin to charge time for spells in a Tales of or Star Ocean game. Our base accumulation is 10 with a multiple of 1. We'll be spending 250 DP to bring the multiples to 6, meaning our total accumulation is 70. A magical projection is the attack roll. This starts at 15, and we'll be adding 50 points into that to bring it to 65 total. Lastly, the magical paths. Because of our natural knowledge benefits, we start out with a level of 40 in the creation and earth paths, and we gain 50 more points to spend on magic levels due to having an intelligence of 10. We'll be putting these into Creation and Earth, granting a total of 66 in Creation and 64 in Earth. Effectively, we can cast any spell from those paths up to level 66 and 64 respectively. Now normally, every 10 levels you gain a free access spell. Now instead of doing that, we'll be going with two subpaths from Arcana Exet, Protection and Plants. Unfortunately, the full list of spells due to this is vast, so I can't list them all here. That said, a lot of the Alchemy Forged weapons would qualify under several of the creation spells, which I haven't listed because, again, of the sheer variety available. And that is how I would adapt the Full Metal Alchemist to Anima Beyond Fantasy. This admittedly is not the most optimized build, 
and I'd need several pages to accommodate the spellbook, but I think it's enough of a start to get the point across. Now, there was a fan-made alchemist class, but because alchemy and fantasy games revolves mostly around potion and bomb making, I elected not to use it. Now, if you've got a character you think would fit, let me know in the form in the description. Until then, stay frosty.